Reading looking to win three consecutive matches against Blues for the first time ever after completing the double last season. The players take a knee ahead of kickoff as the uh, battle against discrimination in our sport continues. So away we go. Or away we will go after that full start. The home side to get the ball rolling. Christmas just nine days away, but a distinct lack of festive cheer at Birmingham City. Off the pitch, the mooted takeover by the Paul Richardson Maxi Lopez consortium has collapsed. On the pitch, the team actually only managed one effort on target at Blackpool at the weekend. It's just one win in five for them. And yet, as we all know, things can change so quickly in this division. A win here tonight would see the home side predicament looking much rosier on the pitch, at least. Three points, the perfect early Christmas gift. Can either team grab the prize on offer before signing off for 11 days? with the Bakuna here. Collat, the goal disallowed in Greenfield Road at the weekend. For two players standing in an offside position. Oh, that's come all the way through, and it's blasted in by Dini. 61 seconds on the clock. The perfect way for him to mark his 600th career appearance. An astonishing error at the back by Reading. Troy Deeney does not pass up that type of opportunity. That's a dream start, isn't it, for Troy Deeney? And I'll tell you what, when you've made 600 appearances, that's a golden gift. It certainly was off one of the defenders en route from Bakuna in. We'll see here, I think they're claiming for an offside. He certainly looked like he was in an offside position as that ball come across. We'll see better. I'll tell you what, it's tight, isn't it? It may not even be... Nabi Saar just keep it on, but the deflection and the finish, you take nothing away from what Troy Dean is all about when he's in and around the box. The composure, the first touch, he knows where the goal is. He doesn't even have to look up. The touch there and then the connection, hard low. Absolutely no chance for Joe Lomley. Well, that was a remarkable, unwitting assist from Mamadou Loom who back heel volleyed it into his path. It was certainly not his intention. And what a wonderful start for Birmingham City. And as I said, it's an absolute dream start. And like I said, Troy Dean, it's still going strong at his age. I'll tell you what, still looking sharp, still leading the line well. Proves that he plays a massive role here at Birmingham City, not only behind the scenes, in the changing room, but on the pitch, setting all examples. 600th appearance and a 175th career goal for Dini. His first appearance was for Walsall 16 seasons ago in League Two, April 2007. And he's still banging him in. As I said, it's brilliant in his example to a lot of younger players in this changing room. He does set the stall out, and like I said, when you're in the big 600, and you're still going strong, scoring goals. I like what he's done this season. People sometimes forget what he does off the ball. It sets this benchmark here at the football club. He has given his side the perfect start. Question now of what Reading's response is. They have come back twice after conceding the first goal to win this season against Cardiff and Hull. 1-2-1 one, one on both occasions. Closed down by Baba Rahman. It is going to be a Reading throw. 
Rahman is looking there for Yaku Meite. And the ball did go out of play before he could pull it back. Meite does brilliant, doesn't he? Because I think that this ball is going out of play. They get on with things quickly. Oh, Rahman trying to play it into Meite. And there, it's very close and tight. Does look like it is out of play. Just that cute sharpness just getting in around his marker. Meite with uh, a wonderful record against uh, Birmingham. And Paul Lintz will be hoping that can continue. He's looking to win consecutive away league games for the first time as Reading boss. It was a worse start, wasn't it, for Paul Lintz? And that's one thing when you come away from home is that you stay in games for long periods to concede so early away from home. And obviously Birmingham being relatively decent at home this season just probably having too many draws that should have been wins it's an uphill battle Baba Rahman back to McIntyre Nabisar one of those players for whom the World Cup break came at a very good time allowed him to recover from injury Plenty of players in that predicament. Now back, starting a match for the first time since August. Bielik looking for the run of Chong. Flag stays down. It's Chong blasting it against the defender. That was some pick out, wasn't it, from Troy Deeney's vision and awareness of and that Tahith Chong is going to make that move in behind Nabi Sot. Doesn't even have to look. Here's Tomitz. Too much to do in the end, and Hannibal brings it away for Birmingham. Ince comes back. I have to say, he's had a sparkling season, hasn't he? Tomitz. He really has re established that form that Tomitz is well known for. Scoring goals, his creativity on this side. Been a big player so far, hasn't it? Well, Mete battling and winning a corner. Well, this has been a rich source of goals for the visitors. Can they do with this set play, which will be taken by Tomitz? Yadam gets the return. Yadam goes for goal, and that was a fine effort, which produced an excellent stop from Ruddy. Some save as well from John Ruddy in the goal. We'll just have a look at Yadam. He gets away from Hannibal. It's too easy, far too easy. Hannibal just looking round, but the strike from Yadam just trying to beat John Ruddy at that near post does nearly catch him out. Forces a real big save. Of course, Reading scored the winning goal at the weekend from a Tom Ince corner, which found the head first of McIntyre and then. And Benge ints with the outswinger, and Loom gets his head to the ball on the near post. Obviously, Wright's on that near post. Just have a look at Loom's bit of movement, and just gets too much connection on that header, doesn't he? Rather than glancing it towards the back post, it's a hard technique to do, particularly off the head. He was at the World Cup, of course, with uh, Senegal. Amadou Loom, unused substitute in all four of their World Cup matches in Qatar, including against England. Longello with the throw for the home side. 
Obadini headed away by Mbenge. Bielik. Leon Sanderson, who celebrated his 23rd birthday yesterday. Kola. Delightful crossfield pass. This is collected by Loom again. It's never been a winning runner in this opening 10 minutes, Mate. We went for that one as well. It's just beaten to it. Bakuna looking for the run here of Chong. Bakuna once more. Gets it back from Bielik. Chong. Looking to square that towards Dini. They keep it going with Dini. It's probably where he would have been on the back post. Yeah, well, he just looked to his right. He's got Pakuna where he can roll it in. That's where you want Troy Dini in them areas where he's waiting on delivery. Baraman for Reading. McIntyre. Reading have suddenly settled after that early blow. Stunning early blow for Birmingham City. Saar. Up to Mate. Back it goes by Loon to Mbenge. Wide by Ince. Shane Long here. The Adam well forward. It's a lovely turn as well by Yadam. Can he get the cross in here? He's gone down inside the box, but uh, no Reading appeals. Plenty from their supporters. Goalkeeper's come a long way here. Lovely booting that back towards Ruddy. Yeah, well, there was a little challenge, wasn't it? Just as Adam enters towards the box, I don't think there was an awful lot in the connection. It's all just teed off, and it's correct. There was no contact at all. There was that slight arm coming across, but there was nothing that was going to force Adam down. So maybe he was just trying to pull one over the eyes of Tim Robinson. Chasing that one down is long. Dini's header. Well, they have been pretty useful with early goals, haven't they? I think it's a key thing, isn't it, if you can score early, and that's what Birmingham City have done this season. Already eight goals. Start games, they do start games relatively well on that. To speak for itself, really. It really was a, a gift of a goal. But they do come out the traps, and that's one thing that John Eustace has sort of tried to get in the make of, of this football club is that they start games while they get the fans on the side, they get that togetherness. And usually they do come out on top. That's a good ball by Lumley. Hendrick. Baba Rahman. Hendry was angling. Hendrick was angling for a return, which never arrived. Chance went well. Bakuna. Bielik. Ball. Some nice stuff here, Blues. Nice when you get an early settler. 
Reading have certainly responded though, haven't they? They've tried to get on the ball and tried to ask questions of the back line of Birmingham CC. Already seen that ball that was spun down the side for Shane Long just to try and stretch the plate. Connor. He actually dropped off short there, John. He's playing slightly out of position tonight and he's been identified as playing in that central role in midfield, but see Scott Hogan not available tonight. He's playing slightly higher up the pitch. He's effective because he's got that pace, he's got that sharpness that can just turn an attack over quite quickly. Dini. by uh, Roberts who had a wonderful chance to score at Blackpool at the weekend to put over from point blank range back by Loom all the way back by Tomitz it's McIntyre so Shane Long has always been so deadly in the air. Got the flick on that. Inch chases. Ruddy, very calm and composed. Could be risky though. They get away with it. Yeah, Long yellow, very lucky, wasn't he? Two little incidents where he's just given the ball away a little bit too cheaply. I've been impressed with him since he's been in the Birmingham City shirt. Wants to get up and down that left side. A real big outlet, but a couple of occasions there, just giving the ball away too cheaply. Baba Rahman, along the target of that one as well. Hannibal looking to lift that over the top for Bakuna. Well, there, McIntyre. And Lumley putting it straight into touch. Well mopped up from Tom McIntyre. Joe Lumley just apologising for the poor pass. He wanted to try and play out. He did an option. Very, very hard again for his side. Looking for Mate. Good header away that by Trusty. As I said, there has been a response from, from Reddy. I don't think the possession will phase any of these two sides. Hasn't been one thing that they've looked at this season. Nothing less possession. They've been more effective. Hendricks ball in. Another chance here. Header forward that from McIntyre and Ruddy relieved to hold on. Mate lurking with intent. I think he's relieved because it's come straight down his throat. It really hasn't. Just not responding and it's going into the box. A couple of times now, Birmingham have been just caught on their heels. This he does brilliant because he gets the full connection. Fantastic technique. I'm really fortunate for John Woody. He's straight down his midriff and catches it. A wake up call. John hoping to latch onto that one. McIntyre again hoiks it away. sides with chances here and what's been a very entertaining first 20 minutes Connor the show is to Mate, but uh, Sanderson will get it away Hannibal 
Falls in towards Dini again by Longello. Hendrick. Long. And he's uh, played a loose pass straight to Hannibal. Now Collat. This is Bakuna. His older brother, Leandro, of course, was a former Reading player. Longello back to Trusty. Bakuna. He's picked out some lovely passes in this first half already. There's another one for Collat. Just over the head of Dini. Longello will retrieve on the far side. Trusty. Felix Roberts. Really good spell this for the home side. Bakuna. Dini calling for it. Just a glancing header away by Mbenge. Dini working hard to win it back for Birmingham. Chong looking to return it to Dini. Penalty! Penalty kick to Birmingham as Troy Deeney goes over at the end of a long spell of Birmingham possession. The referee pointed straight to the spot. Yeah, and I think he's got it right. I do want to see it again, but it's just the movement that we see from the front two. It's been brilliant. Deeney, not just admiring his pass and the little pop off there. I'll tell you what. The more you see how they saw it, once you go to ground, you do run the risk straight away. And there's the trailing leg of Dean. He's probably clever. He's been around, as we said, 600 games. He knows exactly what's going on. It does make it an easy decision for Tim Robinson. You might say it's a little bit harsh, but once you go to ground and you leave your leg high, and you've got the experience of Dean. He utilizes that to the maximum, really. Well, Troy Deeney has taken two penalties this season in the win at Hull in October. He scored one and he missed one. Just coming up to the midway point of the first half. Can Troy Deeney double Birmingham City's advantage here? You bet he can. He's got them both. And Birmingham City lead by two goals to nil. It's been a scintillating first half from them so far. It really has. And I'll tell you what, if you want someone on a penalty, that's your man, isn't it? Troy Deeney. Talks about how he takes them. But just have a look at the venom in this strike. It is hit with some power, pace. He's got his head down, laces through the ball. That's how you take a penalty. There's the incident again with Dini. One, two. It might be a bit harsh, but if anything, there isn't the contact from Naby He does go to ground, but Troy Dini, having that experience, as I said, he knows what's coming. Once one's gone to ground, he just leaves his leg there. So it's a harsh penalty, but. It's a cruel one for Reading and Paul Ince. Well, Troy Deeney's last hat-trick was December 2014. Eight years ago. He's on a hat-trick now with a long way to go in this game. And he's won a free kick here as well. He's at the heart of everything good about Birmingham City. He's been brilliant, and that's what he does. I mean, you have to say that Talk of all day about uh, Scotty Hogan scoring goals, but lots of the work ethic does revolve around Troy Deeney, and that's what he brings to this Birmingham City side. He runs the line. He said he's more than capable of scoring goals. That hatred, by the way, was for uh, Watford at Fulham. Yes, yeah, sorry, Jacko. Long 
with the layoff out wide. And Mate went over in the box. Be cleared here by Bielik. It's Hendrick with the layoff. Ricochet off Mate goes behind for the goal kick. The opening goal, certainly a question about offside here, and uh, Troy Deeney clearly leaning offside, but it does then come off that heel of Loom, and he finishes it beautifully. Yeah, it's such a tight call, isn't it? Because he's just leaning offside, the deflection, and then the finish from Troy Deeney. Well, it is exquisite. That's what he does when he's in the box. Great first touch, and he's been brilliant, he really has, in this first half. Felix with a delightful ball out to Longello. Awkward header for McIntyre. Certainly in the mood here, aren't they? Birmingham City. They're looking so blunt in attack. At the weekend, it's a very different story here. Perhaps they just need, did need a game after the World Cup break to get back into the groove I find that's been the problem hasn't it with certain sides that said it's going to work in so many teams forever it's going to go against teams sometimes the momentum just before and then having the break yes totally you can get on side with that is that they need to start turning a corner You've shown signs of really good things I think it's helped Reading I think Reading Certainly come back and chomping at the bit. Hendrick gets it back from long. It's a very good challenge from Dion Sanderson. Throw to the Royals, who would love a goal back before half time here. Raman. <laughs> been uh, disappointing away from home. Reading, it's fair to say, only Millwall and Huddersfield have fewer away points than Reading's 10 this season. Very up and down. Yes, they were top of the league. Reading uh, back in September. It's unbelievable, isn't it, the way that pretty much either won games or lost, and that speaks why they've only had two draws, and that's why you do feel that well, he's done a brilliant job, Paul Ince. It's the inconsistency of the championship this season. And that's why you can find yourself certainly in the mix of the playoffs or really close to the relegation zone top of the league after six games and then 13th in november it's such a compressed table isn't it and now they're back on the cusp of the playoff places once again we have to look back at the point deduction don't you with derby and obviously reading themselves it really made it sort of tight at the bottom for so many reasons but then kind of knew where it was going to go Kick to Reading here. Eight goals in their 11 away matches, Reading. They're going to need a couple here if they had to get anything from this game. They know they're more than capable. They don't even have got that. Nice little cushion lead, haven't they? Not many were responding to going 1 0 down so early on in the game. Therefore, when they get the ball forward, they do look a danger. Shane Long and Mate have been the ones that they've been trying to get in, involved in the game. It's an, an awful lot of Tom Ince. 
He's another one who certainly can spark this attack and turn this game on its head. Yeah, they both looked good individually so far, those two. Paul Lynch would probably like them to link up a little bit more. Long made a terrific impact against Coventry on Saturday. Paul Lintz paid tribute to that after the game. Probably why he's starting here. Collat, Bakuna. He's had an excellent first half. Collat. Nipped off his toes by Baba Raman. So not looking after the ball well enough there, Ready, Down goes Shane Long. Challenged by Mark Roberts. It just shows his work ethic, doesn't he? He's trying to work something along the front line and does it brilliant. It just comes and picks the pocket from Roberts. A little cliff on the heel. Plenty more action from the championship to come. Norwich against Blackburn. Paul Lintz's uh, former club, of course, in the Premier League. Tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Sky Sports Football. And then on Monday night, Wigan against High Flying. Sheffield United, 7.30. Again, Sky Sports Football. So much life football for you on the horizon. Certainly a suspicion of handball there against Loom. He's got it up to Mate. Hendrick. You can see the intention. The Adam was on the far side, but not there. Well, they are trying to spread the play, aren't they? And he's all about getting the Adam on the ball on that right hand side and Bobber Raman on this left hand side. That's how they set up with the back three and the full backs. Certainly playing much more as wing backs they are to get in this game. That's how they're going to have to try and have more quality out into them wide areas, knowing that they've got the two leading the line in long and mate. It's got to be better quality. Birmingham City with a vice like grip on this game. Reading will feel they have to score the next goal sooner rather than later. And Adam has got it out to Ince. Rolled into Mate. Hendrick trying to get on the end of it. Bakuna away. And here's Dini with a delightful flick to Bakuna. Just left the ball behind. Dini rolling back the years here in the first half. He really is enjoying himself, isn't he? A little Croy flicks around the corner. He's already, already got a brace. Sitting on 600 appearances, absolutely brilliant. That's one goal in his previous eight. Two here in the first 45 minutes. Foul by Long. Reading are going to get back into this, Lee. You think it might come down that left side? Yeah, there has been a lot of ball down this left, and I do feel that's because Kumate is just coming and playing on this left-hand side, who's been probably the most effective player for Reading. So that's why the overloads on this side start to come a little bit familiar, so it is now about producing them bits of quality into the box. They have had flashes of it. Certainly tested John Ruddy in the goal. Saar to McIntyre. That's a foul by Bakuna. And Bengay. 
big moment for him, scoring his first goal at the weekend and the winner as well. Hendrick. Ince. Typical driving run. Yadam into Mete. And then blasted by Ince. Certainly caught hold of that very sweetly. He's forced three saves now off John Ruddy and that one being a real important one. Andrew Phillips running can get one goal back. Do you feel they're right back in this game? As I said, they've showed good signs. Actually producing something and Tom Ince gets on the ball. He's a danger. He doesn't stand still. Mate, he's been the best player, but he responds. Tom Ince. It's a tight angle. He has to try and conduct that ball towards goal, which he does. Experience of Rudy just making sure that isn't going or creeping in that near post. Oh, Chong can go around the keeper and scores. A catastrophe at the back for Reading. Birmingham City aren't complaining. They lead by three goals to nil. It's Tahit Chong who nets his first goal of the season. Well, it's unbelievable, isn't it, when you feel that they are possibly just getting back into the game and showing signs. As I said, Birmingham not in a rush to go forward and try and create, just keeping everything compact, well-oiled, and that's what Troy's doing now. He's having a conversation. Let's not switch off. And that's what happens here. Just have a look at this. I wish everybody switches off. Even Chong does. Not expecting that ball to come through. And it's just there where Benge doesn't deal with it. Good composure from Chung and a super finish. Well, calamitous defensively from a Reading perspective. But as you say, Lee, that's great composure. Easy to miss that. It is when you switch off. And Benge knows he was actually down, ready to do his laces up by the looks of things. But wait till players ready and Reading players just switching off have been their own worst enemies in this first half I think that they've been in the game for long periods tested John Ruddy and yet they find themselves 3-0 down and the third time this season they've scored three goals in a game Birmingham it will come in the opening 38 minutes Paul Lynch just, just watching his reaction. He just can't believe what he's actually seen. Really goal. The hint of offside. And obviously the penalty that could have easily not been given. It's a real cheap goal given away. Take nothing away from Birmingham. They've been clinical. McIntyre. Rabbi Roberts comes out to Loom. Block on that, hooked away by Emmanuel Ongello. I think that's what's been about Birmingham City's play this season is that they've got that defended when they've had to get so many blue shirts behind the ball, make it hard for teams to really try and break them down. Already in half a couple of times, they find themselves in a real comfortable position, Birmingham do. That was just a little conversation, wasn't it, from Troy Deeney in that far corner? Focus. Don't lose concentration. Abaraman. Someone in a way. Chong with a lovely flick. Bakuna looking for Deeney. No mistake this time from Mbenge. Yeah, it's excellent pace from Mbenge. I think Troy knew that. He was never going to beat him for pace. A few years ago, maybe. <laughs> I think that little smile says it all. McIntyre up to Mete and goes to ground. It's going to be a free kick to Reading. Mate went down just holding his face after that coming together with Sanderson. Those are coming together and 
not sure there was any intention there. Ooh, tangle, isn't that? He does just get his arm across. He's certainly not intending to catch Matey in the face, which he does do. He's just trying to get his body there to get himself in a comfortable position to win the ball back. Five minutes to half time. Tom Ince with the free kick. Can they make something from this? Hendrick didn't quite time it. Lifted up by Raman, but uh, again, Birmingham defend it well. And as you say, Lee, they forced John Ruddy into three big saves in this first half. It certainly hasn't been all one way traffic. He's played his part. No, it hasn't been. And that's why I said they've responded well, really, and they find themselves 3 0 down. So just have a look at that. 15 touches in the opposition box. They've dominated lots of the ball. And yet, they find themselves training 3 0. So I think mistakes certainly have been a big problem. Even the new little deflection into the path of Dini for the first goal. You have to credit Birmingham, that's the way they go about their business. They like to play on the counter attack, They're not fussed about having bags of possession. And when they have done, they haven't been successful. Well, Mate's been a handful, hasn't he, in the first half? And uh, Sanderson fouled him there once again. Another set play for Ince to way up here. Got a little flick from Mbenge. Comes out to Jeff Hendrick. Yadam. Raman. Ince. Seems to wrap his foot around the ball there. And again, they've defended it well, Birmingham. You just look how many blue shirts are back in their own half. It's because they get back, they work hard in their numbers, right? The front, the midfield, sometimes they are dropping into that back five because they know that they've got that comfortable lead, but they do it where they sit back so deep at times that you do invite pressure on, but with that lead, See really Reading getting back into this game. I've said that many a times in commentary. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Once again, Mate causing problems and winning another free kick. He's really played his part in the first half. He's been excellent. He really has. I feel like every time he's got on the ball, he's looked a handful. It's a matter of time for there was going to be a yellow card and got bodies in and around him and he's utilizing his strength it's a little bit fortunate I like what I've seen from Mate him playing through the front line has caused problems trusty on loan from Arsenal he's involved with the first tug Bielik also involved it's with the free kick again, He's arrowing towards Nabi Sar. Hendrick. Raman. Ince. Guided down by Loom. Ince. Loom on the outside. Stop the service coming in. Great block from Hannibal. Just to confirm that it was Christian Bielik who was booked and not Austin Trusty. This is what happened. It could have been anyone, couldn't it? It was congested. You can clearly see that Austin Bielik catches Mate as he tries to get away from the two players that were certainly involved. Oh, 
Mate was in there again. There's a decent ball in that once more. John Ruddy will not be beaten in this first half. As I said, I think Paul Ince will be scratching his head to think that he's got a massive off-hill task. Actually trying to get back involved in this game and 3-0 down. He's a massive ask. Dini's gone down here, nursing the small of his back after that challenge. There's a collision with Lumen. Dini might just be a little knee in the back on a cold night. That's one thing you don't want. Yeah, they always hurt a bit more after 30 as well, don't they? Well, it's a really good night for Jude Bellingham to be back at St Andrews, isn't it? 3 0 up already, and what a phenomenal World Cup that young man had. Yeah, he certainly has. They're two good players because his dad's not a bad player as well. Played against him a few times, and there's his brother as well. Some unbelievable talent in that family, and lots of credit to the way they brought him up because unbelievable player and showing signs of being a future England captain. Seen Collar with the throw here. Gets it back from Hannibal. Bakuna. Hannibal again looking for Bakuna. It's a good battle with Mamadou Loom. Ince gets it away. He certainly can't afford to concede again here, Reading. And that is half time. What a phenomenal first half for Birmingham City. And for Troy Deeney on his 600th career appearance, scoring after just a minute, then winning a penalty and scoring the penalty as well. It's been his half for sure. Tahith John with the third half time at St Andrews. Birmingham three. His squad, they went to Dartmoor for some SAS style training. I know which one I prefer, Lee. Uh, Birmingham have certainly gone about it the right way in that first half. Can they get the job done? They have a great record when winning at half time this season. Seven times they've been in the lead at the break. They've won six and drawn one, and they'll certainly expect to go on and win this one. Reading get us underway in the second half a mountain to climb here if they get a goal back early in the half then who knows but they also need to cut out the sloppy defensive errors which will have enraged him in that first 45 and that's why they found themselves down unfortunately and that is the all and end up is that they just haven't been good enough defensively they have showed moments going forward I just wonder what was said at half time from Paul Ince is that can he get a reaction out of his players a few choice words I'd wager and they've got a free kick early in the second half here which Tom Ince will take remember they did score from an Ince set play on Saturday the winning goal at Coventry Birmingham City well aware of the threat that's all about the quality of the Ince delivery here behind for a corner it wasn't a bad delivery from Tom Ince just cinch going along just peeling off then coming back at that near post where he just needed a such a little glance. A lot of pushing and shoving in the penalty area. And the shot is deflected behind. 
a good start to the second half. The Adam letting fly here. Yeah, well, no one goes and actually meets the initial cross. And he ends up coming out on the edge of the box. And Adam just trying to prod that ball back towards goal. Vince will try again. But that's an easy catch for John Ruddy, who's been in terrific form in this match so far. Extended his contract to 2024 just last month. Started every game this season, John Ruddy. And I do think he's been a real key addition to this Birmingham City side. And he's experienced, but he proves how good he is between the posts. Gallo. That has found the chest of Chong. He could be away here. That's a good save. Comes to Dini for the hat trick. Cleared off the line. Hannibal. Reading survive somehow. Bakuna. I think that was McIntyre who denied Dini the hat trick. And again, we've switched on the defensive situations, the errors, and it's another plain, simple ball straight down the middle. And Chong, yes, making that run behind Naby Sod. It's just not dealt with. Just brilliant. Had a similar chance. At Blackpool where he hit the post, and then when it comes out to Dean, you're expecting him to go on and get the match ball. He does everything right, and he ends up being a brilliant clearance off the line by Tom McIntyre. Well, that's excellent defending for sure from uh, McIntyre, the boyhood Reading fan who was a season ticket holder as recently as four seasons ago, but far too easy for Birmingham to get in with just one ball over the top. He shouldn't even get to that situation, Gary, and that's the problem. Is a ball from back to front. Birmingham have been known from, but just one bit of movement from Tahith Chong finds himself 1v1 v Joe Lumley. Apologies for any unsavoury language you may have heard a moment or two ago. Reading coming forward here with Yadam. Certainly been a glut of chances, haven't there, in this game. And, uh, Birmingham have just been clinical when they've come. Long. Two Birmingham defenders attacked the same ball there, but they got away with it. Loom to Ince. Loom again. Ince again. Taken out there, showing the guilty party. Another free kick to Reading. Six on from Tomins. Didn't quite see enough of him in that first half. And if Reading are to pull something out in the back, they have to get him on the ball because I do feel he's instrumental in their forward play. He's an attacking threat. You can see clearly what he has in his mind. He wants to get a half a yard to test John Ruddy in the goal. Yeah, we've seen lots of good deliveries from Ince, but this is actually a chance to have a go. Three-man wall for Blues here. Ince goes for it. And didn't dip in time. And you can see he's trying to get that. A bit of dip and pace on it at the same time. It's real difficult technique. It's not a million miles off. It's just a little bit high and loopy. Again, I wonder what was said at half time. Is it as clear as day is? Reading defensively just wasn't good enough at all. He showed glimpses, sparks through the forward line, but. And straight away, they find themselves under the attack from Birmingham City. They've easily been 4 0. Down goes long. Paul Lynch, by the way, has never lost to Birmingham City, either as a player or a manager. Going to need a very big performance in the second half from his players if that record is to continue. 
Well, he's been impressive since taking over Reading. Steered him away and, as I said, he's capable of doing good things and on a low budget. He's got short-term short -term deals with players. That's what he faces. It's a tough task and that's why them and Birmingham, second favourites to get relegated out of the division, but it's clear he's doing something well enough. Just need to get that bit of consistency, particularly on the road. It's Mate flicking it for long. Mate makes his way into the box now. Hendrick joining it. It's good tracking back from Hannibal. As I said, it's all about having that energy, and Hannibal brings that to Birmingham City. Up and down the pitch, box to box, showing that he has to get back and do the defensive side of his midfield work. Proved he just can do that. 19 caps for Tunisia already. Still a teenager. Made a substitute appearance. And the goal was draw against Denmark at the World Cup. Of course, he then uh, threw the ball, didn't he, in the Australia game at uh, Mitchell Duke. Even though he wasn't involved on the pitch, he made his mark. I do love the fact that he has got that tenacious attitude. He does need to be careful at times. I've watched games where he could have easily have had a red card. But he's still learning. Flags up here as Mate tries to make something happen. Can't fault him for effort so far. He's got a great record actually against uh, Birmingham. Yaku Mate scored more goals against them than any other side for Reading. Six goals in eight appearances. He's certainly had his moments this evening. Yeah, he's been excellent, he has. He's at Loads to work with, with what he has done. He's held it up. He's tried to relieve pressure. Long beaten to it there by Trusty. It's going to be a Reading ball. Trusty there, who wasn't in the USA squad for the World Cup. Loom. Well marshalled behind by Longello. Yeah, just going back to Trusty, I was so surprised that he wasn't in the American squad. He's been magnificent this season. He really hasn't slotted in in that back line. Dean Sanderson have been really standout players. I think we'll touch on how good John Ruddy is back there, but them two have been absolutely excellent. He's yet to win a single cap for the USA. Trusty at the age of 24. Another free kick to Reading. Vince takes it. Baba Raman. McIntyre. He's kept his side in the game with that goal line clearance at the start of the second half. Just about kept them in it, I should say. Long. And make something happen here with Hendrick. Long again has uh, moved into the box now. And the cross is yet to come. Rahman tried. It's a slip. It's all going wrong for Reading, isn't it? No lack of effort or endeavour, but they're lacking quality in the final third. Here they come again with Ince. Yadam. It's blocked by Longello. Yet another corner. Okay, Paul Ince has seen enough. Lucas Joao there. And Junior Hoylet getting ready to come on. Ince with the corner yet again. It's 
Roberts who gets his head to it. Rahman hints with another chance to cross. Takes the low option to Yadam. Zimbenge. Forward by Rahman to Mate. It's a good battle there with uh, Colin on that far side. Mate goes for it again. It's a marauding run. Out it goes. Good challenge by Sanderson. A little bit of afters after between the two of them. There might be a bit of frustration creeping in from Yaku Mate. Sanderson was a little bit of afters, wasn't that? Just a little ticking off for Dion Sanderson here. Mate's just driving into that space and whether has he tries to make that challenge or he just stands off and cheers in his face. That's why there was a reaction. I'm just wondering whether he's Ince. Some awesome strike from Ince. I think he actually would have caught. John Roddy out, whether it be on target, he tries to go at that near post and he really does hit it with the conviction. Great strike, and I do wonder whether Roddy and I are going to just drop into the back four, sacrifice one of them defenders, put another body forward. It looks like two more attacking players are coming on. Yeah, off goes Shane Long and Amadou and Benge. It's a good call, Lee. And uh, Lucas Schwal, Junior Hoylet, will come on. Hoylet, who played in all three of Canada's games at the World Cup. Just one goal for him this season came against his old club Blackburn back in August. Hannibal, great tenacity again from him, Chong, oh! Bakuna will keep it in on the far side. It's uh, levered away by Loom, that's a free kick to Reading. Hannibal and Chong have provided so much great support to Dini in this game those three have just looked a constant threat yeah they have Hannibal touch on his energy of how he has that tenacious attitude this is why he just doesn't give anything off he keeps going doesn't want to go down and then it's a super little slip through Chong really really unlucky isn't he you can see what he's trying to do just topo that ball towards that far corner it's really cute angle it might have been a little touch from Lomley on route to goal Yes, a very good save. The referee just having another word with Sanderson for that foul. He had a word with him a few moments ago as well. First contribution here for Hoylet. It's a good header away from Mark Roberts. But that's the sort of thing that Reading need. Well, that's why he can deliver. Junior Hoylet. He'll come on and be direct, he'll try and put delivery into the box and this is your out coming on as well, he's a handful. Just past the hour mark here, no change to the half-time score. Actually Birmingham have come closer to adding to their three goals. It's an uncharacteristically poor ball in that time from Ince. went over but uh, we play on Baba Rahman inside to Loom down the line by McIntyre Rahman with a chance to cross 
cleared easily by Collin. McIntyre to drill it. And again, he certainly caught hold of that one. I don't know whether he was just going to flash that ball across the six-yard box and show the confidence to take that shot and he hits it absolutely fantastically. Brilliant strike, but it's a straightforward save for Ruddy. Mangella. Down he goes, free kick is given. Will those changes have the desired effect, I wonder? Just wants to get a foothold in the game at the moment. Well, I did think they'd just drop into a back four, but it looks like they've kept the back three and the Adams drops in there. He will get forward, though, which at times will leave Avi Saar and Tom McIntyre pretty much on their own. Hendricks lost it. Hannibal. Wants the free kick. Not going to get it. Hoylet. Hannibal trying to win it back, and Yadam has done well there. And then just a little top back by a frustrated Hannibal. Yeah, there's a couple of decisions that have just gone against him, and then that's when he chases round, and he didn't actually feel there was an awful lot involved in that challenge. He uses his strength and does win the ball. The corners racking up here for Reading. Can they make one of them count, I wonder? It's a poor one from its Easily away by Chong. Certainly looking like one of those nights at the moment for the Royals. Well, Birmingham don't really have to go and get a fourth goal, do they? It's comfortable. And that's why Reading are having a hell of a lot of ball. Trying to force the issue, trying to get a goal back that might just invent a little bit of a spark. Mate gave chase, but it was a vain chase. Behind for a goal kick. Oh, Reading was uh, one of his favourite opponents as a player. Won seven out of 13. And he's thoroughly enjoying this evening so far. Just in a hoodie there, no, no gloves or anything for John <laughs> Eustace, he's putting man. us to shame. <laughs> Neither of these sides in action, by the way, on Boxing Day. They're both uh, live on Sky on the 27th, Birmingham away at Burnley, and Reading at home to Swansea. Chasing this one down is Lucas Schwal. Mete. That's a good block from Bielik. It goes by Nabi Saar. McIntyre out to Baba Rahman. Reading trying to force the issue here, but holding a really good disciplined shape. Birmingham when they're not in possession. I think that's what they're really good at this season is that as clear as day they play on the counter attack, and that's why possession isn't a big thing for John Eustace of Birmingham City, and that's why 
They do what they do. They go over the line. And they look dangerous on the counter-attack too. So Bakuna coming off here to be replaced by 18-year-old Welshman Jordan James. Birmingham's Young Player of the Year last season. He was with the uh, Wales squad at the World Cup for the experience. Wasn't actually ever going to play. I think they see him as one for the future Wales, that's for sure. Yeah, he's a very good player and he is one for the future for sure. I know a lot of Birmingham City fans really like what they see with Jordan James and he's got a good manager under John Eustace who will certainly nurture him and eventually he will be a key member of this Birmingham City team. Dini. Onto that in a flash. Chong. Here's a Birmingham City throw. Past the midway point of this second half. Reading haven't been able to reduce the deficit. the free kick there he's given it everything hasn't it Hannibal Meshbury James back to Longello. He's in a bit of space now, Jordan James. Wants it back on his right side. Pulled as far as Sanderson, couldn't get the shot away. Roberts. Challenge by Loon is a silly one. with older brother looking on younger brother is going to come on looks like he's enjoying his crisps and his <laughs> glass of pop there don't he <laughs> well deserved young man just 17 years of age Joey Bellingham Hannibal let's fly what a good strike that was well blocked Bielik Hannibal leaves it, Dini! Well, you can see how frustrated he is. What a glorious chance for the treble. Oh, it really was, wasn't he? And just have a look at Hannibal, just so clever. We talk, talk about movement and his energy, but he creates this as it comes across. Must have had the shot, and he just slices the shot, doesn't he, Troy Dini? He knows he was inches away from taking that match ball home. Very close to doubling his goals tally for the season tonight. Had one cleared off the line and that one just millimetres wide, having scored twice in the first half. Top class performance. again stepping in quickly was trusty Ince for Reading Hoylitz oh, the head is over certainly a chance for Mate oh, Junior Hoylitz it's in that 1v1 situation with Longello it's a lovely ball in it's driven in it's one of them that you just want to go and invite and head, which certainly does that, and he's been 
the standout player for Reddit. It's been really unfortunate not to get himself on the score sheet. Three goals this season, the last coming in the win at Hull last month. The result they are not able to replicate here. Ince. Hendrick leaves it. Baba Rahman. Joao. Ince. Well, the return ball was never really on. And instead, it's Tahif Chong. Play on, says the referee. Head down, another excellent run here from Ince. Chance to cross for Hoylet. And ricochets off Longello for a corner. Seventh corner for the Royals. Ince has taken them all. Headed away as far as Baba Rahman. Bobble harmlessly behind for a goal kick. Huffing and puffing here, Reading. Trying to cause problems, but it's just not happening. Birmingham are sitting in so deep now and you said how well organized Birmingham are defensively. It is just about getting over the line. They don't need to go and get four and five. It's three points on the board that's going to be instrumental going forward. Get back to winning ways. Keith Downing there alongside uh, John Eustace. Wonderful for him to have that experience to call upon. Hoylet. Ince. Mate makes the run. Trusty goes with him. <laughs> Nabisa. Quarter of an hour to play here. Birmingham's lead looking increasingly unassailable. This is Yadam. Bloom. Joao. Ince. Hoylet. Oh, it's a lovely position for Birmingham to be in, to bring on a teenager, and one of such quality. Toby Bellingham, the England under-18 international, here replacing another teenager. Alibor Mesbury. Joe Bellingham coming on in the championship for the 12th time this season. With his older brother, his proud older brother, looking on. Yeah, another great evening for the Bellinghams, for sure. Good to see his family here cheering him on. Hoylitz. Baba Rahman. Well, back in time. Comes all the way through to Hoylet. Wants it on his right side, of course. Ince. Hoylet. That sums it all up in front of goal for Reading tonight, I'm afraid. 
they do, of course, have a plan B in the form of Andy Carroll. And I think he'll be coming on sooner rather than later. He does offer the physical presence, doesn't he? As you said, Gary, there, it just sums up their evening. It really does. Lots of possession. And really troubled John Ruddy in the goal. It's credit to Birmingham. They've sat in deeply, haven't they? And that's why they haven't been too fussed about having the ball. It's all about defending the three goals they have. That's why it's so heavy in possession for Reading that they force bodies forward. They played half the pitch because they've had to go and chase the game. Despite all that possession, they haven't actually forced Reddy, uh, Ruddy into too many saves in this second half. Excellent in the first. And there's one he's had to make to deny Mate. Well, they're the kinds of save that he's made all evening. There have been ones that you expect him to really make. And that's just flashed. Might be half across there, and it's just fading towards the goal line. He's just leathered that behind the goal in his attempt to get there. So here comes Andy Carroll. He'll be replacing Yaku Meite. Carroll, who uh, lost here with West Bromwich Albion as recently as April. He's got 12 minutes or so to make a difference here. Also going to see Nesta Guinness Walker coming on. He's only made one substitute appearance in the last eight games, so he'll get some minutes here with uh, Baba Rahman making way. Launched up towards Andy Carroll. Immediately into the action. Hoylet. It's. It's gets it back from Yadam. Loom. Oh, McIntyre. Saar. Tom McIntyre again. Always looking to nick it and hit Reading on the break. And that will be a foul. Junior Hoylet, the culprit this time. And that's brilliant from Tahith Chong because Birmingham are sat back that there's no one to go and play a ball into. And he does really well just to ride the foul, run the clock down. He does just get caught as he's getting away from Junior Hoylet, but he does make the most of it, doesn't he? Because just stops Reading in their tracks and allows Birmingham to get a little bit higher up the pitch. <laughs> Diagonal from Longello. Dean is available on that far side. It's headed away by Guinness Walker. Managed the game very, very effectively in this second half. Birmingham had their chances on the counter. Rarely looked like conceding. Hoylet. Knocked inside by Yadam. Long from Saar, Ince will chase that one. He's done supremely well to keep that in play, Ince. 
Who's available? The answer is Carroll. And can Joao knock it in? He can. It is a goal back for Reading. Andy Carroll making the difference straight away. And Joao was almost over the goal line when he put it in. But he did put it in. I'll tell you what, it's all about this pass. Have a look at this from Naby Sar. It's an unbelievable ball to Tommy, who does absolutely remarkable to keep it in. And when you've got an Andy Carroll on, it's all about just hanging that ball up, which he does. He does brilliantly, gets control of Hendrik, and then it was an easy tap in, wasn't it, from Lucas Rout. It actually looked like it was going to go in on its own, but striker's instinct, Carroll brilliant, instrumentally, does deflect off Hendrik. I'll tell you what, could have easily been Jeff Hendricks' goal, couldn't it? But Chris Schrout making sure that it was his goal. Dini volleyed in, but the whistle had already gone. So no clean sheet for Birmingham tonight. They'll be disappointed about that. Is it too little too late from a Reading perspective? Bellingham, a delightful touch. It goes by Bielik. James Bellingham to Bielik. Good keep ball from Birmingham. Chong. James, Chong, and a delightful first touch, back it goes to Trusty, Roberts, from Roberts to Chong. Forward it goes by James. Free kick's been given. Chong, the player, poleaxed after playing the ball. And Tim Robinson was just waiting to see if that was going to go into the path of Troy Deeney. That's when Chong was brought down in the centre of the pitch. You see there, Jordan James trying to pick out Troy Deeney on this left-hand side. Jordan James did start the first six championship games of the season, but uh, no start since then. He's had to be content with some substitute appearances. But there'll be more starts for sure. Diagonal from Roberts up towards Dini. Felix. Chong. Longello. He's got it back again from Chong. Pinched back by the Adam, with no foul committed. And it's amazing what Andy Carroll actually brings to a, a side, isn't it? Just that presence, he puts himself around, and he was key in getting that first goal for Reading. One or two anxious murmurs from the home fans as Ince picks it up. It's a good header away by Bielik. Dini. Clipped again. Foul by Saar. And the yellow card will come out here. Well, the referee went to his pocket. Might have changed his mind. He certainly looked like he was going for the card. Yeah, I actually felt that he was going to issue him a yellow card. It's a clumsy challenge, isn't it, from Naby Sides. Clearly clips the heels. Troy Deeney. Here is Saar. McIntyre. Hoylet. Ince. Reading nick another goal now. Sets up a grandstand finish. 
certainly not what Birmingham want. Yadam. Hoylet. McIntyre. Back to Guinness Walker. McIntyre can cross first time here. Carroll is available. It's actually a very, very good header away, that one from Longello. Under immense pressure from Carroll. Loom smashing it against Bielik. Anxious murmurings all around us here. It's... Oh, he's lost it, Ruddy! But he's uh, been given a foul. Really like John Ruddy, wasn't it? And the ball flashed in from Tommy time and time again. It's a foul that's on, like on Sanderson from Carroll, just a nudge in the back here. I think you just see behind John Ruddy, but he does drop the ball. Could have ended up being really embarrassing. And as you said, could have made a, a thrilling finish to the game. Dennis Walker. Into the final two minutes of the 90. Carroll the target again. It's just a line of five, isn't it, for uh, Birmingham now. Protecting their two-goal advantage at this late stage. Guinness Walker for... McIntyre, and it goes for a throw to the Royals, still looking to dig in here and get another goal. It's challenged there by Bellingham, we play on, cleared as far as Loom. Yadam, Hoylet. to get it back on his right side and in doing so it's been pinched off him and this is Bellingham it's the sort of mazy run that he enjoys so much good challenge from Lou but it is a throw to Birmingham it's exactly what they wanted high up the pitch nice oh, excellent from Bellingham because he's got no one in front of him he's got no support he has to do it alone great feet and just forces that throwing on the far side just relieving taking the nervous edge off this place because it has certainly come around the ground that Reading getting that first goal is it you do feel that it could easily push for a second and then it does make it cagey through the added minutes well we're moving into five minutes of stoppage time not quite the world cup but uh, enough just to give a little bit of anxiety to the birmingham fans Manuel Longello getting back to his feet here. There is Jordan Graham. So will be replacing him. Number 11. To uh, sit on the bench unused last couple of games, Jordan Graham. Got a few minutes here. Well, you get the uh, honour of naming player of the match, Lee. I've got an inkling who you might go for, but <laughs> fill us in. Well, really, I think there's only one person, really, and he's got himself a brace. So we know about his 600 appearance. He's gone out with a real bang, hasn't he? He showed his quality still. In that first half, second half, not so much, but his presence on the pitch has been excellent. A 
way. Birmingham happy just to knock it anywhere at this late stage. Tyre just trying to help it forward to Joao. It's gone straight through to Ruddy. And uh, too little too late in the end for Reading. He certainly showed some fight in the second half, but the damage done in an opening 45 minutes was a bit of a defensive horror show. You take the defensive errors out of the equation and we might have had a different game on our hands, but we have to credit Birmingham. They've gone about their business the way they do. Defended well. And I said, when you get, you find yourself 3 0 three -nil off at half time, it is all about management, game management, and that's what they've done well. They've sat and defended, they've counter attacked when they've had to, and could have easily gone and got a fourth. You look at the Chong chance and even the Troy Deeney chance. A foul on Nesta Guinness Walker. Collat. Poilet. It's. McIntyre. Yet another big diagonal from him towards Hoylet. Ince, deflected and in, it's a second goal for Reading with a minute of stoppage time to play, courtesy of a deflection. Well, it's a massive deflection but look at the fact that Tom Ince is just so positive, he drives in towards the box, he is, it's off, looks like Roberts on route to goal but he hits it well, through the legs of Trusting, straight off the inside of the boot. Mark Roberts, it's a difficult one for Ruddy because it's always forced in the corner, but it might just be a little too a little too late for Ruddy. He'll be pleased with the response in his second half, though, Paul Ince. His fifth of the season, now top scorer for Reading this season. Just makes things rather edgier than it needed to be for Birmingham City. From a Reading perspective, this has got to go forward very, very quickly because we played the five minutes of stoppage time that was signal. Saar. McIntyre. Oh, somehow kept that in, Junior Hoyler. Loom. Reading fans screaming for this to go forward. McIntyre. Carroll, Ince, can he get the ball into the box here, Loom, that's beautifully done, he goes over but I don't think there's any suggestion of a penalty there, and that might be enough for Birmingham City, Deeney of course has won the free kick at just the right moment, leading by example yet again. Oh, they worked it really well, didn't they, Reading? And Mamadou lose it. He's got to put the ball in the box. It was brilliant on the touch, the byline, and then it's all about delivery. It was a shout of penalty. It didn't look like one to me. The referee did uh, flash a yellow card in the direction of Andy Yadam there. Paul Lintz felt that Troy Dini made the most of that. There is the final whistle, 600 not out for Troy Deeney, no hat-trick for him, he'll be wondering how, he certainly had his chances to claim the match ball, but a wonderful player of the match display from the 34-year-old who notched his 175th and 176th career goals to help seal 
a very important victory for Birmingham City. Tahith Chong made it 3-0 before half-time. Reading made a late fight back here, which could have made things interesting. Lucas Schwau off the bench to nod in from very close range. And then Tom Ince with a deflected drive from the edge of the box, but not enough. And it's disappointment for Reading, joy for Birmingham City. Over on Sky Sports' main event, we're off to the World Darts Championship Day 2. If you want reaction from here at St Andrews, you want Sky Sports football. A huge victory for Birmingham, their first win in four, which lifts them into seventh place. It's finished. Birmingham City 3, Reading 2.